بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم We will begin our commemoration of the Battle of Badr with verses from the glorious Qur'an. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Wa'lamu anna ma ghanimtum min shay'in fa'anna lillahi khumusahu walil rasooli walidhil qurba wal yatama wal masakin wabn al-sabeel وابن السبيل إن كنتم آمنتم بالله وما أنزلنا على عبدنا يوم الفرقان إن كنتم آمنتم بالله وما أنزلنا على عبدنا يوم الفرقان يوم التقى الجمعان والله على كل شيء قدير إذ أنتم بالعدوة الدنيا وهم بالعدوة القصوى والركب أسفل منكم ولو تواعدتم لاختلفتم في الميعاد ولكن ليقضي الله أمرا كان مفعولا ليهلك من هلك عن بينة ويحيى من حي عن بينة وإن الله لسميع عليم إذ يريكهم الله في منامك قليلا ولو أراكهم كثيرا لفشلتم ولا تنازعتم في الأمر ولكن الله سلم إنه عليم بذات الصدور وإذ يريكهم وإذ يريكموهم إذ التقيتم في أعينكم قليلا ويقللكم في أعينهم ليقضي الله أمرا ليقضي الله أمرا كان مفعولا وإلى الله ترجع الأمور يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا لقيتم فئة فاثبتوا واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وأطيعوا الله ورسوله ولا تنازعوا فتفشلوا وتذهب ريحكم واصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين The verses from سورة الأنفال Verse four, verses 41 to 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the translation of which is, Know that whatever spoils you take, one-fifth is for Allah and the Messenger, His close relatives, orphans, the poor and needy travelers, if you truly believe in Allah, and what we reveal to our servant on that decisive day, when the two armies met at Badr, and Allah is most capable of everything. Remember when you were on the near side of the valley, your enemy on the far side, and the caravan was below you. Even if the two armies had made an appointment to meet, both would have certainly missed it. Still, it transpired so Allah may establish what he had destined, that those who were to perish and those who were to survive might do so after the truth had been made clear to both. Surely Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Remember, O Prophet, when Allah showed them in your dream as few in number, had He shown them to you as many, you believers would have certainly faltered and disputed in the matter. But Allah spared you from that. Surely He knows best what is hidden in the heart. Then when your armies met, Allah made them appear as few in your eyes and made you appear as few in theirs. 
so Allah may establish what he had destined, and to Allah all matters will be returned for judgment. Believers, when you face an enemy, stand firm and remember Allah often so you may triumph. Obey Allah and his messenger and do not dispute with one another or you would be discouraged and weakened. Persevere. Surely Allah is with those who persevere. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na bima fihi man al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim wa ajarana min khizzihi wa adabihi al-alim. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to come together on this historic and momentous day that in the second year after the migration of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the 17th of Ramadan, the pivotal battle of Badr took place. And we will read the narrative and inshallah talk more about the lessons of the battle of Badr itself. But it is extremely important for us as believers and as an ummah and as these customs and these traditions are being revived within the ummah that we know the value and the place and the importance of yearly commemorations. These significant events that took place in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and in the lives of previous messengers as well. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he likened the ummah to one body. We often hear this hadith, that if one part of the body is feeling some sickness, then the rest of the body suffers from sleeplessness. But if we go deeper into that similitude, that the ummah is like one body, it is a body that also extends beyond just the time that we live in now. That we are connected to the members of the ummah, we are connected to the previous generations, we are connected to all of the believers throughout time. And that in that sense, we are still one body. And the modern ethos, the way that people want to live in the world today, which is highly individualistic and very nafsani, that it is catered to the self and really wants to carve out such an individualistic identity that someone does not even feel a part of their own past. They might not even feel connected to their own family, their own lineage, much less their spiritual lineage and their connection to the prophets and messengers. I am unique. I am just me. Well, no, in reality, you're not. And we as believers, alhamdulillah, we recognize that we are connected and we are part of the body of the ummah. And that we are not people who are shipwrecked and just going with whatever direction the wave takes us. Because when someone cuts themselves off from their history, from their family, from the spiritual significance and inheritance left behind by the prophets, that's what they become. They have no meaning in their life. They have no origin. And that means also, by extension, they have no direction. But we are connected to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he told us that all of the previous prophets and messengers, the likeness of them is that of a beautiful house, this perfect house that is being built, and people walk around the house and they say, this is a very beautiful and pristine house, but the cornerstone is missing. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said that all of those bricks that built that house of prophethood were the previous prophets and messengers. And the likeness of me and them is that I am that cornerstone. I am that final piece that makes it perfect and complete teaching us once again that we are all connected to the prophets and messengers and that we are connected to the best of the prophets and messengers sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And that this is a source of great honor for all of us. These yearly commemorations remind us of that connection. They allow us to experience the sentiments 
the spiritual states associated with these various events in the life of the Prophet وسلم, which then reignite and strengthen that sense of connection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran and by we can understand this to also know how we're connected to time in general. Allah says, Yes, Alunaka Anil Ahilla, Kulhiya Mawakitu Lin Nasi wal Hajj. They ask you, O Prophet, about the phases of the moon. Say they are a means for people to determine time and pilgrimage. That the believer is actually experiencing a deep connection with time. Even now that we're in the month of Ramadan, it's not like any other time before or after it of the months. So we are alive and experiencing the unique gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings down in each time. And we see this even in the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that this precedent has been set by him. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam found the Jews in Medina fasting on the day of Ashura, he asked them why they were fasting on that day. And it showed this connection to prophethood and to history and to the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, this is the day when Allah allowed Musa to prevail over the Pharaoh. We fasted out of reverence for him. That we are fasting, we are remembering this day. We have a commemoration and we have a devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of that commemoration to thank Allah for the blessing of saving Prophet Musa and giving him victory over the Pharaoh. What did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, we have more right to Musa than you. We are even closer to Moses. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fasted that day and told people to fast it as well. And to make his ummah distinct, he said, add, add either a day before or after Ashura. But we have more right to Musa. If that is the degree of connection the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us regarding the life and the events of the life of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, what then of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ah, We should be even more connected. These events and these momentous historical occurrences should be alive in our hearts. We should experience them and the sentiments that are associated with them. So what kind of feelings should we have and how should we understand and internalize and reflect upon things like the Battle of Badr? the greatest victory that literally changed the course of the entire ummah and the greatest army of believers ever assembled. These are people whose names we should speak with reverence and love and awe. People who, if it was not for their sacrifice, we would not be sitting here today. As we're going to read in the narrative, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Oh Allah, if this army is not victorious, there will be no one left on the face of the earth to worship you. So what debt do we owe to them? These are the people whose names we should know, not actors and actresses and athletes and people who in the sight of Allah might not be worth very much. But these are the people chosen by Allah to stand in the ranks of battle with the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. These are the stories that give us direction. These are the stories that give us meaning. These are the stories that let us know what we are connected to and who we must be in order to honor them and to honor this prophetic inheritance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our hearts and to increase us in love and to give us a great portion of what he gave the people of Badr. Ya Arham al-Rahimeen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah, uh, you can have access on the Telegram group to the narrative that we're about to recite and other uh, qasaid and uh, parts of the program, inshallah. You can find the PDF on the Al-Maqasid Telegram.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل وصحبه وسلم Permission to fight back is hereby granted to those being fought for they have for they have been wronged and Allah is truly most capable of helping them prevail They are those who have been expelled from their homes for no reason other than proclaiming our Lord is Allah Had Allah not repelled the aggression of some people by means of others, destruction would have surely claimed monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which Allah's name is often mentioned. Allah will certainly help those who stand up for him. Allah is truly all-powerful, almighty. For over 13 years, Muslims had not been allowed to fight back against the brutality of the Meccan pagans, leading to the migration of the Prophet wasallam, and many of his companions. As the hostilities continued, these verses were revealed, allowing Muslims to fight back. When the Muhajideen migrated to Medina, they left behind their homes and valuables, which were taken by the pagans of Mecca. To redress the financial loss, the Prophet ﷺ decided to capture an unarmed Meccan trade caravan headed by Abu Sufyan, a Meccan chief. Eventually, the caravan escaped, but the Meccans mobilized an army over 1,000 well-armed soldiers, more than three times the size of the Muslim force, which was consisted of 313 soldiers. This led to the Great Battle of Badr, which took place of the 17th of Ramadan in the second year after the Hijrah. Preparing for War The Messenger of Allah وسلم, consulted the companions after the caravan had gone, and the army was coming out to meet them. Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu, spoke excellently, following, followed by Sayyidina Umar anhu, who also spoke excellently. Miqdad anhu, then said, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah, we will not say to you what the tribes of Israel said to Musa. Go, you, you, you and your Lord, fight. We are staying right here. Rather we say, go, you and your Lord, and fight. We will fight with you. By Allah, we will certainly fight in front of you, behind you, and to your right and left. This made the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very happy, and his face lit up. But he asked the group once again, Give me your counsel. The migrants' willingness to fight was beyond question. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to gauge the helper's willingness since the agreement had only been to defend Medina, not to go out in battle. At that moment, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, who was true, sincere, and preferred Allah and his messenger over all else, understood what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asking. He said, O Messenger of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, it is as if you are directing your question to us, the Ansar. He then delivered a speech that was filled with meaning. O Messenger of Allah, we believe and affirm what you have come with is true. We have taken oaths and given you our pledge on that basis. Therefore, go wherever Allah has commanded you. There are people who stayed behind in Medina who have just as much love for you as we do. Had they had known that you were going to engage in battle, they would, not, they would not have stayed behind. Perhaps you wanted something, yet Allah willed something else. Go wherever you want, for by Allah, if you were to take us until we reach Birk al Ghimad in Abyssinia, we would go with you, and not one man would stay behind. If you took us to the sea and plunged in, we would dive in with you. We have no fear of meeting the enemy. We are steadfast in war and unwavering in battle. The Prophet Wasallam's face lit up like the moon, and he said, Continue onwards and receive good news that brings you joy. Allah has truly promised me victory over one of the two groups, either the caravan or the army. By Allah, it is as if I am now looking at the places of the enemy's fatalities. The Muslims entered the valley of Badr from the southern pass and paused to rest. It was a flat plain covered with soft yellow sand, which made walking difficult, and there was no water. They were tired and laid down to rest. Soon Allah sent down some rain, which provided them with water and made the ground firmer under their feet. They, they, they then pushed forward to the well nearest to them and stopped there. One of the companions, Al-Hubab ibn Al-Mundir radiallahu anhu, having had prior experience of the valley, wished to advise the Prophet, but being wary lest he should break the rules of courtesy with the Prophet he first asked, 
Has Allah inspired you to choose this spot, or is it a matter of planning and stratagems of war? The Prophet immediate the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately replied. It is a matter of planning and stratagems of war. Reassured al reassured al hubab said, "In that case, this is not a good place. Let us go and make camp at the farthest well, build a basin and fill it with water. Then fill up all the other wells so that the enemy will be deprived of water." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam approved of this plan, and they moved to the new camp, which was on a hill in the middle of the valley. Once there, they built a hut for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be his headquarters. The basin was made and filled with water, and the other wells in the valleys were filled up with sand and rocks. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam formed the army, he passed in front of each man to lift their spirits and to straighten their ranks, bearing an arrow in his hand. Stand in line, O Suwat, he said to one of the helpers who was too far forward, and he gave him a slight prick in the belly with his arrow. O Messenger of Allah, you have hurt me, said Suwat. Allah sent you with truth and justice, so give me my retribution. Take it, said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, laying bare his blessed midsection and handing him the arrow. Whereupon Suad stooped and imprinted a kiss where it was his due to place the point of the arrow. What made you do that? said the Prophet, and he answered, "O Messenger of Allah, we are now faced with what you see, and I desired that my last moment with you, if so it be, for my skin to touch your." Skin. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed for him and blessed him. The battle begins. Quraysh had now begun to advance. Seen across the undulating dunes, the Meccan army appeared to be much smaller than it was. When hearing the Meccan leaders, when, me, when hearing of the Meccan leaders present in the polytheist army, such as Abu Jahl, Umayya ibn Khalaf, Utba, and others, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Here is Mecca." She has thrown out to you her most beloved sons. When the two armies faced each other in battle, three men from the pagan side stepped forward, each challenging the Muslim to a duel. Muslims to a duel. The men were among the leaders of Quraysh and had been increased by incensed by Abu Jahl, accusing them of cowardice when they had tried to convince the people not to fight. They were Urtba and Shayba, sons of Rabia, and Urtba's son Al Walid. Before. Before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam could give any orders, three young helpers sprung forward, eager to demonstrate their devotion to their cause. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered them back and told his own cousins, Ubaida ibn al Hadith, Hamza, and Ali radhiyallahu anhum, to respond to the challenge. They had exchanged but a few blows before Sayyidina Hamza killed Shayba. Sayyidina Ali killed killed al al Walid. Although Sayyidina Ubaida and Utba had wounded each other seriously, at that point Hamza and Ali radiyallahu anhuma immediately turned upon Utba, finished him off, and carried Ubaida back to the Prophet, back to where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was standing. As it became clear that the wound was fatal, Sayyidina Ubaida radiyallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if he would be considered a martyr in the sight of Allah azza wa jal. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave his beloved cousin the good news that he was. Angered by the death of their champions, the pagans charged the Muslims, whom the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had arranged in a square formation and instructed to withhold the arrows until the enemy was very close, to make sure that each arrow would count. As the assault continued, the Muslims were hard pressed and suffering losses. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed to his Lord, "O oh Allah." Should this group be defeated today, you will no longer be worshipped on earth. He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, continued to supplicate intensely for the help which Allah had promised him. The veiler of the companions, radiyallahu anhum. Some of those present at Badr were at the early stage of their youth, around 15 years old. We find the likes of the two youths who were young in age, yet great in loftiness of their aspirations, who were standing by Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, radiyallahu anhu, in battle. Mu'adh and Mu'awith, the sons of Afra radiyallahu anhuma. Abdul Rahman said, "When the army formed ranks for battle, I saw a young boy to my right and a younger and a, another young boy to my left, which made me feel unsafe. I then sensed the person to my right calling me and whispering, 'Uncle, do you know which one is Abu Jahl?' I said, 'Yes.' He said, 'I request that you point him out to me if we see him during battle.' I said, 'My nephew, what do you want with him?' He replied, "I was told that he used to harm Allah's messenger. 
I swear by the one who resigns over my soul that if I see him, I will not stop assaulting him until one of us is dead. I was amazed by his faith and strong resolve. Then the other young boy spoke to me, asked me the same question, and gave me the same answer. I would not have preferred two large and powerful men in their stead. During the battle, Abdurrahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhu saw Abu Jahl. So we said to the two of them, there he is. They swarmed him and slew him. Abdurrahman ibn Auf said describing them, they were like two falcons swooping upon their prey. They struck him until he fell, after which they went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give him the good news of the demise of the tyrant who stood in the way of truth. The Prophet asked them, which of, the, which of you two killed them? Each one of them claimed that he was the one who had killed them. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, did you clean your swords? They said, no. After looking at their swords and seeing blood on both, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you both killed him. Another companion present at the battle was a young man who was 17 or 18 years old, the martyr of exalted rank, Sayyidina Haritha radiallahu anhu. He was his mother's only child. He exemplifies the loyalty and sublime aspiration found within the hearts of the peoples of purity and nobility. Prior to the battle, he asked the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him martyrdom. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, O oh Allah, grant Haritha martyrdom in your cause. Haditha was one of the 14 who were martyred. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, returned to Medina, Haditha's mother came to him and asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you know how precious Haditha is to me, and I have no other child except him. Where is my son Haditha? He replied, Consider him with Allah. He was killed in the cause of Allah. She requested again, Tell me where my son is. The Prophet responded, I am telling you that he was killed in the cause of Allah, so consider him with Allah. Finally, she said, I am asking you where my, where my son is. If he is in the garden, then I will be patient. If it is otherwise, then what shall I do? The Prophet wasallam replied, Mercy on you, O mother of Haritha. Paradise does not just have one garden, but many gardens. And your son has attained the highest firdos. The turning of the tide. After the Messenger of Allah وسلم, had intensely called upon Allah with his names, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed, When you cried out to your Lord for help, he answered, I will reinforce you with a thousand angels, followed by many others. A light slumber came upon him, and when he awoke, he said, Be of good cheer, Abu Bakr, Allah's help has come. Here is Jabril, and in his hand is the rein of a horse, horse what he which he is leading, and he is armed for war. Then the Prophet Sallallahu advanced, brandishing his sword and reciting the verses. Their, vo the, their forces will be defeated and forced to flee. The presence of the angels was felt by all, but the present was only presence was only visible or audible to a few, and in varying degrees. Two men of a neighboring Arab tribe had gone to the top of a hill to watch the battle. A cloud swept by them, a cloud filled with neighing of stallions, and one of the men dropped dead instantly. Ro dropped instantly dead. His heart burst from fright, said the other one who lived to tell of it, judging from it what his own heart had felt. One of the believers was pursuing a man of the enemy, and the man's head flew from his body before he could reach him, struck off by an unseen hand. Others had brief glimpses, glimpses of the angels riding a, on horses whose hooves never touched the ground, led by a Jibreel alayhi salam, who was wearing a yellow turban, whereas the turbans of the other angels were white, with one end left streaming behind them. Although the angels were pursuing the pagans, the battle was still hard fought. Finally, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sayyidina Ali, hand me some pebbles. He took the pebbles and throwing them at the enemy said, defaced be their faces. O oh Allah, cast terror into their hearts and make their feet stumble. The pebbles entered the eyes of every single pagan, as declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said, It was not you, O Prophet, who threw when you threw, but it was Allah who threw. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then gave them the battle cry, Ya Mansur Amit. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, Whenever the battle intensified, we would seek refuge in the messenger with the with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No one was closer to the enemy than he was. This sentiment was captured beautifully by Imam al-Busiri in his blessed poem Al-Burda. 
Those whose help comes from the messenger of Allah, even lying, lions encountering them in their dens would be spe speechless with fear. From that moment on, the pagans began to flee from the field, with the Muslims at their heels, killing some and capturing others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of this, Indeed, Allah made you victorious at Badr when you were vastly outnumbered. So be mindful of Allah. Perhaps you will be grateful. When the battle was over, the Muslims found that they had lost 13 men. Six of the martyrs were migrants and eight were helpers. Of the pagans, 70 were killed and 70 taken captive. The Muslims were buried and the bodies of the pagans were dropped into a pit and covered with sand. The Prophet Sallallahu then stood over their graves and said, O Abu Jahl ibn Hisham, O Umayya ibn Khalaf, O Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, O Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, did you find your Lord's promise to be true? For I have certainly found what my Lord has promised me to be true. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu asked, Why are you addressing lifeless bodies? He replied, By the one whose hand is Muhammad's soul, they hear what I am saying just as well as we do. The Prophet wasallam and his companions returned to Medina as victors, and their enemies were vanqu vanquished. Their decisive victory changed the course of history and was witnessed by it and celebrated in the heavenly realm. It was come in narration that Sayyidina Jabril came to the Prophet wasallam and said, What standing do the people of Badr have amongst you? The Prophet wasallam said, They are the best of Muslims, or something to that effect. Sayyidina Jabir alayhi salam then said, We hold the angels who attended Badr in the same esteem. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised their rank in this life and the next and gave them unparalleled honor of standing alongside his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in this pivotal battle. I envy all there at his side who watched the turning of the tide as truth prevailed and falsehood fled and hope restored life to the dead. May Allah benefit us by the people of Badr, grant us their love, and unite us with them in the highest firdaus, in the company of the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Hakka Hamdi, was Salah to a Salam or Allah Ashraf and Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadan wa Ala Ali was Sahbi Woman Wala who lay on Medin. We begin by praising Allah Ta'ala as it is right to be praised. He is the one who guided us to Him. He is the one who sent us the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who helped this Prophet on this noble day, the day of Furqan, the decisive day when He gave the Muslim victories. He is the one who everything. He is the one who decrees everything that occurs in existence. Every action that was taken in his way was by his decree. Every victory gained in his way was by his decree. Everything we've ever done to serve his path was because of him. He is the one who said, You did not throw when you threw, rather Allah is the one who threw. He is the one who gave the, the Prophet and his companions victory on this blessed day. And he is the one who we ask on this blessed day to give us madad, and the secrets and openings that he gave those companions on that blessed day to renourish our souls and our hearts with what we want and need to get closer to him. We ask him for his praise and blessing for the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the one who came to us with this message, who brought us to Allah Ta'ala and showed us out of the darkness of our jahiliyyah, of our, of our oppression of ourselves and of humanity to the, lightness, the light of Islam. We ask that, we ask it for him and his family and his companions, the ones who gave him victory on this day, who sacrificed their lives, their wealth, their time, their sweat, their tears, their family members for giving aid to the Prophet We ask as well for his brethren in prophecy and all the other believers who follow in his footsteps. May Allah make us amongst them. Ameen. Like we just heard from the brother previously, the narration of what occurred during the Battle of Badr. This blessed day that Allah called, in, called it in the Qur'an, Yawmul Furqan, the decisive day. The day where Islam was given victory over the non-believers. The Prophet ﷺ was given victory over the non-believers. The day where the ranks of those who participated in the battle were elevated to such a degree, they were considered the best of creation on the face of the earth and in the heavens. The day where such a turning point occurred for this religion that Fear of, 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 the, of, of the community in Medina spread 
throughout the Arabian Peninsula. This is a very noble and blessed day and a day we should all hold dear. A day whose remembrance we can extract many wisdoms from and apply it to our everyday lives. As was previously mentioned in the narration, the, prophet, the angel Jibril came to the Prophet and asked him, what do you say about those who participated in Bedr with you? And the Prophet said, we consider them to be the best of us. Those men who participated, the companions who participated with the Prophet on this day, on that battle, the best of the Ummah. And he said, the angel Jibreel salam said, and likewise we consider the angels who participated with you, the best from amongst us of the people of the heavens, of the creation of the heavens. Participation in this battle was what elevated them to such a high rank. Participation that is not merely just fighting or engaging an enemy, but rather it is being with your prophet when he needed you the most. To turn your back from everything else that can call you away from him. To be with him even though you know Allah promised him victory. And that you have no obligation to be with him because your oath to him was only to protect Medina and not to protect him on this battlefield. To be with him. Like we heard when the blessed companion Sa'ad bin Ubadah told him that if he were to tell us to go into the ocean, we'd be right behind you. This is what elevated their rank. This, this, this yearning to be with the Prophet in all moments. To be with him in all moments. To help him in all moments. Beyond, you know, to such a capacity where it's not humanly fathomable to, to help him. Such that they would leave their food, their drink, their sleep to be with the Prophet of Allah Ta'ala. In a hadith, the companion Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, who participated in Badr, he was the one who came across Abu Jahl on the battlefield at the end after the tr children attacked him, and he found him on the throngs of death, about to cross the threshold. And he told him he was going to kill him, give him the final blow. And Abu Jahl told him, cut off my head from the bottom of the neck so my head looks big. He was filled with arrogance until the last moment, until death overtook him. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud was a man of small stature physically, although he was a man of large stature in the, rank, in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala. The Prophet said that the two skinny shins of Abdullah bin Mas'ud are heavier on the scales of Allah than the mountain of Uhud. So he took his head and he struggled carrying it or dragging it across the floor to the Prophet Because Abu Jahl was a man of large physical stature but one of small spiritual stature on the scales of Allah. And he says in this hadith, this narration that he said to one of his companions, Abdullah bin Mas'ud said that, صَلَّيْتُ مَعَ النَّبِي لَيْلَةً صَلَّيْتُ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَيْلَةً I prayed one night with the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَأَطَالَ الْقِيَامِ And he prolonged his qiyam in salah. And the Prophet ﷺ was known for prolonging his qiyam in salah. In many narrations it said that he would start with Surah Baqarah in qiyam al-layl. And the people praying with him will think he's probably going to read like a hundred ayahs maybe and then call it a day and break the core. And he'll keep going, finish Baqarah, start on Nisa, start on Ma'idah, so read Al, -Al, 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 -Al Imran. How many juz is that in just one raka'ah, one qiyam? So this was his practice. And so Abdullah bin Mas'ud anhu was praying with the Prophet ﷺ one night and he said the Prophet ﷺ prolongated his qiyam. And he said, He said the Prophet ﷺ prolongated his qiyam with his long recitation to the point where a terrible thought occurred to my mind. Now the listener who is listening to him the individual said, What occurred to your mind that was so bad? He said, It came to my mind to sit and leave the prayer and leave the Prophet. This matter clarifies to us just how exceptional their love for the Prophet was. To leave a non-obligatory prayer, as you all know, is something you can do. But to him, to do so meant to leave the Prophet ﷺ. He considered it a terrible thought, something he couldn't even fathom. To leave the Prophet ﷺ once you're next to him in prayer, 
Just to sit down and leave something's permissible. You can do it. But to do that, no way. And so this is what elevated the companions to that lofty rank. To be the best of the ummah. Because they had such veneration, such deep love for the Prophet ﷺ, to the point where they put him before themselves. And a story we heard from one of our teachers, he said that. Um, that one of his, uh, one of his uh, peers in knowledge, also a scholar of Islam, visited some scholars in Shishan, in Chechnya. And he met a Chechnyan mufti there. And this Chechnyan mufti told him, you know, I used to always make dua to Allah Ta'ala, or I used to always wonder why Allah Ta'ala yani, didn't make me of the companions. This mufti, this scholar, really wanted to be from amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he used to make dua to have that kind of rank and status with Allah Ta'ala. So he said that one day he saw in a dream that he was on a bus with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. And they were on the road going somewhere. And then the bus gets to a cliff and it's about to fall. Something happens, the bus gets to a cliff and it's about to fall. So this Chechenian scholar leaps out of the bus and he's looking for a boulder to put under the tires of the bus to stop it from rolling over and taking the life of the Prophet He looks around, he finds the biggest boulder he can find, the biggest rock he can carry. He takes it, he turns around, only to find the Sahaba putting their heads under the tires of the, of the buses, stopping it with their own lives. And then it occurred to him, this is why. This is why they have that rank. For them, the Prophet ﷺ was above anything else. Their lives and anything else they had really in this world. And that is what we should take from this noble day to recognize that this is what made them who they were, the best of this ummah. And this is what we should strive to exemplify in our own lives. Every moment of our life is an opportunity to be with the Prophet ﷺ. Every moment of our lives is an opportunity to be with the Prophet ﷺ. In our actions, in our thoughts, in our sayings, in our interactions, to the minutest details of your life, you can be with the Prophet ﷺ in, within it. How you put on your shoes, how you put on your clothes, the first thing you do when you wake up, how you use the restroom, how you engage with your spouse, how you pray, how you spend your money, what kind of neighbor you are, the deepest and most sensitive thoughts in your heart, all these things can be catered to fit a sunnah, and it is as if you're with the Prophet So every moment of our lives, we are like Abdullah bin Mas'ud standing behind the Prophet in prayer. Every moment of our lives, we are like Abdullah bin Mas'ud asking ourselves, is this the moment where I turn away from the Prophet and do something else? Or is this the moment where I turn towards him and do what he would do in this situation? So we ask Allah Ta'ala to bless us all in this, on this special day. The same Allah, the same Lord, who made the companions who they were and elevated their ranks. The same Lord who gave them victory on that special day, He is still here. And He will continue to be here, He will always be here. The same Lord, the one who quenched their hearts with spiritual nourishment and unlocked them to secrets of this religion and of creation, the one who elevated them in rank with the Prophet ﷺ and made them with Him, on the Day of Judgment in the Paradise, He is still here waiting to give that to us. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us sincere and genuine in asking that of Him, to make us people who achieve that on this special day, and to have our hearts nourished with what He has to give us. We ask Allah Ta'ala to satisfy all of our needs and take care of them for ourselves and our families and our community members, to take all of our personal needs and our familial needs and communal needs, to make us people who carry this message all over the world, to make us people who serve the Ummah and the Prophet specifically, just like how the companions used to serve the Ummah and the Prophet specifically. We ask him to give us, to make us just like those people who used to carry the Prophet in the sandals or his siwak or his water, or used to spread his message and teach what he taught to other, other clans and other people. We ask him to make us people who are tools of this religion to go across the earth and to spread and water and harvest whatever there is to offer the ummah of goodness. We ask that for ourselves and our loved ones and, our, and anyone else who ever asked us for dua. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve men ve ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing us together on this very special day where we commemorate one of these very special moments in history that is indicated in his book and he commands us subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember days like these. Wa zakirhum bi ayamillah. And remind them of the days of Allah. The days of Allah are those very special days where which it becomes a part of sacred history. He gives victory to those people that are he is pleased with. People that dedicated them lives their lives to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they're honored. The Quran is not a book of history per se. Rather, it has a sacred history. It has a sacred history of all of history, of anything that can be considered to be history from the first human being until this day and age, is that he chose the very best of stories to tell us. And uh, there is no doubt that everything that relates to our Prophet وسلم, if there is sacred history in general, then the most sacred of all history is that which is related to our Prophet Muhammad وسلم. And by revisiting these very blessed moments, these great manifestations of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you and I bring immense blessings into our lives. Spiritually by just mentioning them, and then practically by translating the core meanings of all of these events into our day-to-day -day lives. One of the things that we were mentioning earlier in an online session is how the companions fought outwardly in the Battle of Badr. But you and I fight on a daily basis in the battleground of life. We all experience the battleground of life. Every day is a struggle by virtue of living in this world. Just as there is a battleground at the level of the heart, you and I, from the time that we are born until the time that we meet our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, will struggle. Allah has made it this way. But when you and I embrace these realities and that we are inspired by prophetic guidance, we will have what it is that we need to face these difficulties and these tribulations and the adversity that He sends our way subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the two things that I really wanted to focus on in the brief time that we have together are two traits that are difficult to find in people these days. And you could say increasingly more and more difficult to find in people. And these traits are not traits that we haven't heard about. But these are traits that we want to on this blessed day of the Battle of Badr in relation to this battle think about how they were so greatly manifested by those special people around the Prophet ﷺ during his time but how you and I need these traits during our time. And these traits are none other than commitment and determination. Commitment and determination. You and I all have a general idea of what commitment is. But let's look at a dictionary definition to remind ourselves. Because there might be dimensions of this word that we actually don't know. Commitment is the state of being dedicated to a cause. It's the state of being dedicated to a cause. And what greater cause to be dedicated to than the cause of Allah? the deen of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in relation to our own implementation of it, in relation to our sharing it with our fellow brothers and sisters that are also walking on the planet earth with us. Nothing is greater than that. Nothing is more important than that. Nothing is more lofty in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than that. But also, we use the word commitment to connote a pledge or undertaking of some sort. Something that we have said that we're going to do, that we are going to undertake. So the idea of commitment is, in that dedication, we do what it is that we've said. And this is something that is, again, lost by many people in our time. 
and the etiquette of the people who came before us, they oftentimes didn't even want to say what they were going to do for someone. They would prefer just to do it without saying it. And if we say that we're going to do something and we fail to do it, this is a sign of nifaq. This is a sign of hypocrisy, that there is a misalignment internally in relation to our principles of what we're supposed to do and what we actually really do, what our faith dictates in what we actually do ourselves. So commitment is a very important word that we want to bring into our lives, not just the word, it's realities. But then there's something else that also relates to commitment. An engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action. That's another definition of commitment. So think about the meaning and the implications of this. By making a commitment, you are restricted. But when you bring the nafs, the ego, into this equation, it doesn't want to commit precisely because it wants to have freedom of action and do whatever it is that it wants to do. And so the main reason that we fail to uphold our pledges and our commitments is because the vile nature of our own lower selves that we let get the best of us. And this was virtually non-existent in the lives of the companions, especially the close one, the companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one was more refined than they were. What you Kikum was manifested no better way than in the lives of our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He purified them, just as he by extension purifies everyone else when we embody his teachings, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So commitment is something that we want to think about. And then this other word that relates closely to commitment, but it's one of the ways that if we can fixate our minds on it, that we can remain committed. And this is determination. Determination is resoluteness, firmness of purpose, unwavering in commitment in relation to what it is that you've set out to do. So in order to truly be committed, we need to be determined. And who was more determined than the blessed Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? He was someone that they said that they would give him whatever it is that he asked for. And we know what he then said, were you to place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I would never give up what I'm doing until Allah establishes a affair or I die doing so. That is our messenger. He didn't call to himself. It wasn't about status. It wasn't about pleasure. It wasn't about wealth. It wasn't about any of these things that the vast majority of people on earth seek. For him, it was about Allah and him drawing near to Allah. And he was committed like no one else was. Every single waking moment of his life, rather in his sleep state, even because we know that the prophets are such, is that yanamu qalbi wa la tanamu aini, is that their hearts sleep, that their eyes sleep, but their hearts don't sleep. And this is why sleep does not break their will do. Is that even in his sleep, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a mercy not only for us, but all of creation. And I've shared this before, but every once in a while I like to remind myself of it. And I'm going to read through this because I think it's of profound benefit. And this is an email that one of the, uh, the wife of one of our dear friends sent when we were hoping that she was going to come and to take part in a program for us. And there's a mention of the Battle of Badr, so it is especially apt to mention on that a day like this. And so I will read most of the email, and this is what she says. And essentially, she is saying how she can't come and why. She says, I'm actually drowning here in the UK. This is where she's from. Your du'as are requested. We have started up many projects. And those who are involved in the da'wah will know exactly what she's talking about. And yet there are so few people that can truly carry them. We find ourselves having to multitask. She talks about all the programs that she's doing. 
at the micro madrasa, at the new Muslims class, at the home, at a, co at a cooperative that my daughter attends, at a weekly sisters class for general Muslims, taking care of children on a daily basis, at the kindergarten we've done, helped and with the child care during the events. We've run lecture at events around the UK, support and give counsel to sisters going through divorce, marriage, a breakdown, health problems. Each time I prepare someone to take over a role in the work we are doing here, they either get married and leave the city, get pregnant and have to stay at home, or simply grow tired and weary with the project they've been given. We ask Allah for lutf. Then she says, we live in a time where few, very few will sacrifice. The teachings that change the course of our lives seem only to inspire people in the moment. They love the idea from being from those who serve Allah, yet lack the strength and courage to divorce the world. Their mortgages, careers, cars, homes, children are dear to them. They simply cannot live life as this work requires them to live. They will justify their way of life through giving charity when they can, attending courses and following lectures from time to time, and giving dawah to their colleagues at work. Their khidma lies, and this is not belittling it, of course, in lecture, in following their interests, whether it be the study of Islamic medicine, designing modest cloning, cooking prophetic foods, calligraphy, the list goes on. These are all blessed Muslims, for they are aware that life must be lived upon the halal, and thus they live upon it, but they live it upon, they live upon it on their own terms. They have no inclination to do what really needs to be done. We are in an age when our sons and daughters are being lost to drugs, alcohol, fornication, and even worse, the actual loss of faith. We ask Allah for protection for us and our offspring. Despite this, no one is interested in saving humanity. They are only interested in saving themselves. We find ourselves in the midst of madness. Through this work, this faqira, this impoverished soul has begun to understand the way of our teachers to give love and to not give orders. For the people of this age cannot do what is asked of them. They desire only to be loved by their teachers and not to be asked to serve the doubt where their teachers serve. SubhanAllah, she mentions the name of her teacher. She taught me this. And she said, give love. For no one wants to hear about God's commands. They only want to hear about love. The hearts of the people of our time are weak. It is taking me 10 years to understand these words. My dear sister, the people of Allah that uphold the truth in the spirit of the Sahaba, who sacrificed their homes, their wealth, their children, and their very selves as they stood on the battlefields of Badr and Uhud and the migration to Taiba, taking nothing but the love of Allah and His Messenger's provisions as they built the Masjid of Medina with their bare hands, those whom the spirit of La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah caused them to declare, to declare, may my very being be sacrificed for your Messenger of Allah is a spirit that is rare among people. The majority are, as Imam al-Ghazali says, like donkeys in a manger, pleased only when his master brings him more hay to eat. The increase of a wage, a promotion, the security of their jobs, this is what fills the majority with joy. They earnestly work to seek stability in this world and turn their entire being towards this lowly goal. Their world is their qibla, and so their lives are directed towards it. They are in complete circumambulation. Their lives resolving, revolving around their economic stability. Blessed be Imam Ujjain who said, the Muslims are in their graves. 313 men of Allah stood with the Messenger وسلم, on the field of Badr with four horses between them, with a few swords and sticks and stones. But they had a faith that was so formidable that they fought like supermen with a strength that did not come from their bodies, but with a strength that came from their souls. Souls illuminated with the nur of Haq. In Habib Umar, the spirit is alive, and we tasted it and fell in love with it. We were sincere and wanted only Allah and His Messenger and to be in the presence of the Salihin. We pledged allegiance to this path and laid our hearts bare in front of Allah as fuqara, masakin, impoverished people, as people that would be in the service of this truth and be as our teachers are, those that gave their flesh, their blood, their lives in raising the banner of this great truth. 
We were ordered to these lands to plant seeds. And we were so naive to think that the job of he who plants seeds is easy. On the last night in Tarim, she mentioned her teacher's name. She told her, if you can't plant seeds, then plow the land so it is fertile enough for the next generation to plant seeds. As we plow and plow and plow, but my goodness, the weight of this task is so extreme for fuqara like ourselves. We find that our feet and our hands are bleeding. And until we have alongside us people that bear the spirit of sacrifice, we will have to carry this work alone. By Allah, we have been in the company of great people. And because of them, we do not break under this weight. And by Allah, this fakira feels their medad. We are scattered around the earth, and we know we need to help each other and bear the weight of this work. We are brethren bonded by a secret that we were given in sacred lands, and so we have true love for you. But at this moment, there is no one that will carry this world while I am away. And so we cannot move from what the post that we have been given. We have a good opinion of our Lord. And no in time this will change, but at this moment, it seems like this is what has been written for us. We ask Allah to give us rida, contentment. And what he finds ourselves in, for in reality, we are blessed to be a part of this momentum task. We complain because of our own blindness and lack of understanding of the khair, the good that surrounds us. And we feel nothing but shame in front of our Lord for our weakness and pray that Allah can make us from the woman of Allah and from the men of Allah. That we be from the people of Allah. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. This is the heart of an individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought life to that is living these essential meanings that Allah ta'ala blessed the companions that came before us and the type of people that embody this spirit will always be few and far between all throughout human history history when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-baqarah kam min fi'atin qalilatin ghalabat fi'atin kathiratin bi'ilah that how many as a small force vanquished a mighty army by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what are the traits of these individuals wallahu ma'asabirin they need to learn patience they need to learn to be steadfast fortitude and then to make the dua that was made that by those that then went out to kill Goliath, David and his army, alayhi salam, what was the dua that they made? Rabbana afrigh alayna sabran. That, oh Allah, shower patience upon us. So we learn that Allah is with the patient, but then we learn that this is the dua we have to ask for, that Allah shower us with patience. Afrigh, pour patience upon us. وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا And make our feet firm. One sunnah عَلَى الْكَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And give us victory over the disbelieving people. You and I need to bring these meanings into our life. And there are many, many, many meanings that we can take from the Blessed Battle of Badr. But one of them is the importance of commitment and then carrying out our commitments by being determined bringing determination in our lives. And the greatest thing that we can be committed to is learning about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then sharing that life with other people. People need to hear about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Without this, it is not just a matter of life and death in a worldly sense. We are talking about eternity. This is what is at stake, eternity. And alhamdulillah, this is something that we hope to see, is that more and more people are inspired by these meanings in our time, not just in a very short period of time, but they will revive them, and we need this in every single time. And subhanAllah, we were at an iftar not too long ago with our dear uncles, the Uncle Musa and Uncle Latif, and these are people that became Muslim in 1970, so over five decades ago, and they were telling us stories about how they were and about their level of dedication, despite there being a lot of resources, despite there being a lot of places of prayer around them, and how that they're still Muslim after all of these half a century, that they still remain committed to this deen. But there has to be people in the generation that come after them, and then there has to be people that come in the generation after them. And just as there are gaps between prophets, there are also gaps between generations of awliya. 
And every generation has to have its people that are a means for the revival of these meanings in the hearts of individuals. And this is what we hope to see in our time, is that there will be a revival of these meanings of commitment and determination, where you and I take this seriously, where it becomes the single most important thing in our lives. Our teachers teach, even when you do something like go to a barber, go to the store, your concern for the guidance of people should precede whatever worldly reason that you're going for. This is what should drive us. This is what should cause us to do everything that is that we do. This should dominate our thoughts. May Allah wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. And may we do our best to live up to these meanings and to live the prophetic concern and to be people of commitment and determination and to find inspiration for those who came before us and those that are living in our time so that we can live right and die right and to return to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala with not just ourselves, large numbers of people that we've been the means solely from the bounty of Allah to add it to effect and also bring with us not only into paradise but into the higher degrees. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and everything that he's descended upon the ummah by virtue of this blessed battle. May Allah ta'ala continue to bless us to receive its blessings in the little day that we meet him. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. So inshallah, uh, if you look at the PDF that was sent out, uh, the compilation for the Badr program, after the narrative, we're going to look at these adhkar uh, qasida, and we'll begin with Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. These are the two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which many ulama say uh, is Ismillah al-A'zam. Allah's supreme name is found in Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, Followed by uh, the dua of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam is taught to us in the Quran, a dua of repentance. Uh, so we'll combine the two, inshallah, and we'll uh, say this dua 40 times, inshallah. Ta'ala. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين 
الرحيم يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم انظر الينا يا كريم يا حي يا قيوم اسلك بنا نهج القويم يا حي يا قيوم وعافنا واشف السقيم يا حي يا قيوم وهب لنا خير العظيم يا حي يا قيوم يا قيوم وافتح لنا فتح المبين يا حي يا قيوم وانصر جيوش المؤمنين يا حي يا قيوم واخذل جميع الكافرين يا حي يا قيوم واصلح شؤون المسلمين يا حي يا قيوم وصب يا رب القلوب يا حي يا قيوم ونقطها عن كل شوب يا حي يا قيوم واغفر لنا كل الذنوب يا يا حي يا قيوم واستر لنا كل العيوب يا حي يا قيوم واكشف الهي للكروب يا حي يا قيوم وافتح لنا باب القبول يا حي يا قيوم وامن الهي بالوصول يا حي يا قيوم همنا المنى مع كل صول يا حي يا قيوم حنن علي روح الرسول يا حي يا قيوم سيدنا ابا البتول يا حي يا يا قيوم خير الورى طه الوصول يا حي يا قيوم زكي لنا به العقول يا حي يا قيوم بجاه والد فاطمة يا حي يا قيوم أمضن بحسن الخاتمة يا حي يا قيوم بجاه والد فاطمة يا حي يا قيوم أمضن بحسن الخاتمة يا حي يا قيوم بجاه والد فاطمة يا حي يا صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله توسلنا بسم الله وبالهدي رسول الله وكل مجاهد لله بأهله البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين
Amin Habibillah Tawassalna bi bismillah Wa bil hadi rasulillah Wa kulli mujahidin lillah Bi ahli al-badr ya Allah Salatullah salamullah Ala taha rasulillah Salatullah salamullah Ala yasin habibillah Ilahi salimi ummah Man al-afati wa al-nimah Wa min hammin wa min ghammin Bi ahli al-badr ya Allah Salatullah salamullah Ala taha rasulillah Salatullah salamullah Ala yasin habibillah Fakam min rahmatin hasalat Wakam min dhillatin fasalat Wakam min ni'matin wasalat Bi ahli al-badr ya Allah وكم أغنيت ذا العمر وكم أولئت ذا الفقر وكم عفيت ذا الوزر بأهل البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله لقد طاق على القلب جميع الأرض مع رحبي فجو من البلا صعبي بأهل البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين عبيب الله أتينا طالب الرفق وجل الخير والسعد فوسع من هتى الأيدي بأهل البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله فلا تردد مع الخيبة بل اجعلنا على الطيبة هيا ذا العز والهيبة بأهل البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه 
رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله وإن تردد فمن باقي بنيل الجيع حجاتي أيا جليل ملناتي بأهل البدر يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله هلا ياسين حبيب الله Inshallah, we will read now from uh, the Badr Khutbah, which has the Arabic and the English. We'll read the English translation, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praise be to Allah who originated all things and brought them into existence, who created and fashioned all things, who decreed and ordained all things, who arranged and ordered all things, who chose to bring forward certain things and to delay others who chose to hide certain things and manifest others, who chose to reveal certain things and conceal others, who chose to unveil certain things and veil others, who purifies and cleanses whoever he wishes, who chooses and selects whoever he wishes, who clarifies and enlightens, who guides and facilitates, who forbids and commands, who encouraged certain things and cautioned against others, who warned and gave good tidings on the tongue of his beloved, the most pure, the chosen one from the tribe of Mudar. He is the one who singled out the most splendid month, Ramadan, the illuminated, and singled out the 17th night for a vast portion of his bounty. The following day, he made manifest his absolute victory and bestowed his complete support upon his beloved, whose character is most sweet, our master Muhammad, the one whose face shines, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah's prayers, peace, and blessings be upon him, his family, the pure people of his household, and his noble companions, the emigrants and the helpers especially those who were present at Badr and those that follow them upon the straightest of paths until the day of gathering. We bear witness that there is no deity save Allah alone. He has no partners. Allah is most great. We bear witness that our master Muhammad, the most pure of his slave, his no most pure, the most pure is his slave and messenger. O oh Allah, bestow prayers, peace, blessings, and honor upon him, O oh living, O oh self-existing, O oh beneficent, and upon his pure family and great companions. Prayers as numerous as all things manifest and concealed, prayers which purify and cleanse the heart and guide it and illuminate it, prayers through which the ummah is rectified, Prayers through which uh, evil is deflected, all impurities are removed, the banner of truth is raised, and the oppressors and disbelievers are crushed. To proceed, O people of faith, most of the days and nights of the month of Ramadan, the month of mercy and forgiveness, of salvation from the fire, have passed by in succession. They have passed by, and each of you is in a different state, a different degree of progress and readiness. Now the eve of the day of discrimination has approached, the day on which the two forces met. It is an event which brings good tidings to everyone who is truthful and honors the covenant of his Lord and is a reminder and a warning to everyone who is heedless and fails to honor that covenant. So reflect deeply upon these meanings, for the two forces represent the two groups on the last day. A group will be in paradise and a group will be in the inferno. The Qur'an expressed this when it mentioned these two opponents. What difference is there between the two groups other than aims and objectives, beliefs and intentions, character traits and qualities? What difference is there between them other than belief and disbelief, filth and purity? These are the things that lead to victory or loss, entry to paradise or the fire, and the pleasure or wrath of the compeller. O believer, Scrutinize your aims and objectives, your beliefs and intentions, your character traits and qualities. Ask yourself to which of the two groups you are closest and to which of them you belong. 
If you do not correct your aims and objectives, strengthen your beliefs and rectify your intentions and refine your character and attributes in these glorious days and magnificent nights, when will you do so? When will you join the people of success? When will you leave behind your wrongdoings and wipe your slate clean? Do you have the strength and audacity to meet Allah, the one with one unforgiven sin? So how about numerous sins which have blackened your book? In what state will you be when you meet him? How will you respond when he asks you? Have you not heard the statement of the one who Allah chose and sent? Woe to the one who reaches Ramadan and is not forgiven. So let this night be a night of reconciliation with your Lord the one whose knowledge encompasses everything you reveal and conceal. Perhaps he will turn to you and gaze upon you with the eye of his mercy. I mean, perhaps he will be generous to you and be content with you. On the day of meeting, perhaps he will show immense kindness to you. Prepare yourself to receive a gaze like the gaze the people of Badr received from the Lord of all people on this magnificent night. Prepare yourself with a true resolve and intention to purify your heart, to earnestly act upon Allah's commands, to follow the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, his chosen one, to sacrifice your soul and everything you possess for the sake of la ilaha illallah and for the people of la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. O oh Allah, O oh living, O oh self-existing, gaze upon us. O oh Allah, O oh living, O oh self-existing, O oh most compassionate, O oh most merciful, gaze upon us. O oh Allah, O oh living, O oh self-existing, O oh most generous, gaze upon us. O oh Allah, O oh living, O oh self-existing, O oh most high, O oh most great, gaze upon us. O oh Allah, O oh living, O oh self-existing, O oh limitless one, O oh flawless one, gaze upon us. O oh Allah, O oh living, O oh self-existing, O oh Lord of majesty and generosity, gaze upon us. Gaze upon our mothers and fathers, our progeny and our relatives, those who have rights over us and those that we love. <clears throat> Gaze upon us as you gazed upon our masters, the noble people of Badr, by your mercy, O most merciful. Allow us to be with them when we are resurrected. Bless us to be in their company in the party of your servant, the chosen one, your prophet, the one who you selected, your, intercess your intercessor, the one who is sought, your beloved, the one who you singled out, the master of the people of the heavens and earth. O Allah, O living, O self-existing, we turn to you on this night in this gathering of ours for the sake of the ummah of your beloved, the chosen one, Muhammad. Oh, you know best what their state is and what has befallen them. So, O oh, living, O oh, self-existing, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, relieve their suffering and rectify their hearts. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, O oh, living, O oh, self-existing, unite them on the path of guidance. Bring harmony between them. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, O oh, living, O oh, self-existing, remove the hardships that have befallen them. Transform their states. Raise the banner of your beloved, our master Muhammad, among them and give them the ability to support his cause. O oh, Allah, heal the sick among them. Bless those who are suffering with well-being. Free the captives among them and defeat their enemies. O oh Allah, ya hayyu, ya qayyum, O oh living, O oh self-existing, we ask you for quick relief, swift support, a mighty victory, and a clear opening. O oh Allah, ya hayyu, ya qayyum, O oh living, O oh self-existing, forgive us our past and future sins. Complete your blessings upon us and guide us to the straight path. O oh Allah, do not send us forth from this gathering unless you have accepted us all and blessed us with your pardon, with well-being, and with your subtle gifts, and with protection from all harm and evil in both abodes, and, uh, and bestow upon us all the good of this life, the barzakh, and the next life. We ask you for this by the blessings and status of your servant and beloved, the trustworthy one, the chosen one, Muhammad, the master of the messengers, by the noble people of his cloak, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima al-Zahra, al-Hassan and al Hussein, and all his sons and daughters, and his progeny and the pure people of his household, by Khadij al-Kubra, Aisha al-Rida, and all the mothers of the believers, the rightly guided caliphs, the people of Badr, Uhud, those who pledge their allegiance 
allegiance at al aqaba and those who attained Allah's pleasure by pledging their allegiance at al hudaybiyah and all the noble companions and all those who are in his presence from among the prophets and messengers, the angels who have been drawn near and all of Allah's pious slaves. May Allah's prayers and peace be upon him and upon them all and upon us along with them. By your mercy, O most merciful, transcendent is your Lord, the Lord of might, beyond the false things that they ascribe to him. Peace be upon the messengers. All praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. الفاتح بالقبول تمام كل سوء المام والغاث في الذنوب خطيئات أن الله سبحانه وتعالى يبلغنا وإياكم كما بلغنا هذا الليلة سنين بعد سنين وعوام بعد عوام في خير وفي يا الله يا غوثا يا غوثا يا مجيم دعاء أحشرنا مع النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ومع أهل بدر ومع الصحابة جميعا وأمهات المؤمنين جميعا يا الله ومع حبايبنا يا الله في خير وفي احفظنا يا حافظ ما تحفظ بعدك الصالحون ربنا لا توزق قلوبنا بعد ديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة كنت الوهاب اجعل هذا الليلة ليلة نويرة يا الله أعد علينا فوائدها وخيراتها وبركاتها سنين بعد سنين وعوام بعد عوام في خير ولطف وعافية في خير ولطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تجعل آخر العد بين وبين هذه الليلة أعطنا بركاتها يا الله خيراتها يا الله سنين بعد سنين وعوام بعد عوام في خير ولطف وعافية على هذه النية وعلى من مشايخنا في خير وعافية وإلى حضرة النبي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الفاتحة